hello guys welcome back to my channel this is learn to sew with nani and i'm your teacher Anoye. so today we'll be talking about how to make the off shoulder bustier dress okay i love you guys thank you for all the love you've shown me on this channel thank you for subscribing to my channel thank you for your likes thank you for your shares they mean so much to me i appreciate you all okay like i said i'm bringing you a tutorial on how to make an off shoulder bustier dress i will be working with a lace fabric <coughs> then this is the under the interfacing or the interlining will be working with so for your interlining you either use your bridal satin your raw silk duchess <coughs> sorry guys i'm i have cough so please bear with me i might be coughing in and out of this video so please bear with me okay that said so i'll be working on the interlining and i'm using mirror face bridal satin there are lots and lots of interlining in the market ranging from raw silk, satin, doll face, mirror face, taffeta, you know, just work with what you can afford. <coughs> Alright guys, so to start drafting, I'm going to fold my interlining into two and this is not the regular method we only use for our free hand. Okay, so I've thought us how to draft bustier dresses blouses in previous tutorials using freehand but in this tutorial just for the sake of those of us that love pattern drafting i'll also show you a method you can use aside from the previous method i've taught like we all know there are so many ways to kill a rat the same way there are so many ways to cut different styles and fashion designing so i bring you to this tutorial you can draft patterns with this but for this tutorial i am drafting directly on my fabric and i'll be adding all my allowances to the fabric <coughs> okay guys so from the, the measurements i'll be using are the shoulder to bust point the shoulder to on the bust and the shoulder to the half length those are the vertical measurements then for the horizontal measurements i'll be needing the bust circumference the under bust circumference the waist circumference the shoulder circumference okay so now from my shoulder to the half length is 20 inches for my client i'm working with a plus size client i'm working on a plus size client okay guys so from shoulder to the half length is 20 so whatever it is you have as a shoulder to half length you put it on that point okay then i'll draw that out in a straight line okay so that's the shoulder line okay so from the shoulder line you get your chest line your bust point and your under bust. Okay, so the under bust I'm working with is 12 inches. <coughs> We're well, making that 12 and a half because of seam allowance. The under bust is 17. I'm making that 17 and a half for seam allowance. <coughs> okay, guys. So all of those measurements, you rule them out in a straight line. Okay, rule out all your horizontal, your vertical lines. Sorry, guys. Okay. All right. So the next thing to measure is your chest line. Okay, and the chest line I'm working with is ten inches. Now to derive your chest line, you divide your armhole measurement by two. So that's the chest line, the bust point, the under bust and the half length <coughs> these are the four lines you need to draft your bust here okay so now you also need the upper bust line and the upper bust line is also called the bust radius okay that is where you'll be drafting your off shoulder so to derive your upper bust line measure the difference from your bust point to your under bust that was what you have as your upper bust line if you measure from the shoulder you see that you almost have off 
5 inches off, which is the usual for our off shoulder. We always take 5 inches off. So by the time I measure that, you see that I always have, I almost have my 5 inches off. Then on the bust point, I'm marking what half of my bust span. I also mark that on the under bust and on the half length. The half, the bust span measurement is the nipple to nipple measurement or the breast distance. <coughs> okay, so on the shoulder line, I'll be adding 1 inch to that to make it 5 and half. Remember, my bust span is 8 inches, whether by 2 is 4 inches plus half inch my allowance, that will give me 4 and a half. So that's why I marked on all my lines, this chest line, the bust span, the under bust and the half length. But on the shoulder line, I marked 5 and a half inches because we'll be taking a dart at the shoulder point. So, and I don't want it to get too deep like the bustier cuff, start get, getting to the neckline. It doesn't really look nice. So I'm connecting all of those points in a curved line so <coughs> from the shoulder line to the upper bust line is where i have the off shoulder so from that point is off we wouldn't be needing it then on the bust point to so come down by one inch then go up by one inch okay so then on the bust or the under bust i take a that of one and a half inches on both sides on the half length i take a that of one inch on both sides <coughs> now because i'm working with a plus size client that is why i'm taking a that of one and a half inches on the under bust then on the upper bust i also take a that of one inch on both sides of the bust span line then use my curve ruler to connect the points remember i said i'm only using one and a half because i'm working on a busty client so if your client's bust is is a medium size you can use one inch 0 and 0 0.75 whatever just make sure that you measure your client's measure, bust measurement to know the amount of that you use so I've, i'm connecting the points now from the bust point to the under bust, then to the half length, then you take the dart back to the upper bust. Okay, remember we took a dart of one inch on both sides of the upper bust. <coughs> okay, so that is out. Now you want to curve the region around the under bust. Okay, that's the region around the bust. So you want to make sure that you don't have any pointy edges, that that part is curved. Right, so I'll start taking my measurements. On the upper bust line, I will impute my shoulder measurement okay so the shoulder measurement i'm working with is 16 divided by 2 gives us 8 inches now another way to do your off shoulder is to subtract 2 inches from your shoulder measurement that gives us the neck width you'll be working with okay so if i'm to use the neck width of 6 inches it means that on my shoulder line i don't need any allowance because the 8 inches which is the original shoulder line then we we'll subtract the 1 inch that on both sides which is 2 inches so subtracting 2 inches from it we already have the 6 inches so and I added half inch seam allowance for the sleeve <coughs> on the chest and I measure a quarter of my bust measurement plus 3 inches okay then and I measure the dart intake which gave me half inch okay then i add that but remember there is a little that on the chest line so you have to measure that so your measurements don't come short on the half length i measure quarter of my waist measurements plus three inches in my allowance then i measure the dart intake which gives me two inches so i also measure two inches for my dart replacement now you can also decide to do your underboss measurement so <coughs> I'll mark quarter of my underboss measurement plus three inches seam allowance, then plus the dart intake. Okay, so I'm replacing my dart, right? So you make a connection from the chest line to the underboss, then to the half length. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so then from the seam allowance we made for joining the sleeve. You make a slant line to the chest line and that will serve as your armhole okay so you can see that the measurement is complete you can start to mark your shoulder measurement half of your shoulder measurement plus half inch okay that takes care of the allowance now for the neckline i'm going to come down by two inches from the off shoulder point or you measure your cleavage and start from the shoulder okay so you measure your client's cleavage how much she wants to expose and mark that from the shoulder 
okay <coughs> so you can either come down by two inches or measure your client <coughs> whichever one you have it accurate okay so having done that i'll now take a curve and you know make cover out the neckline now you can decide to have a sweetheart neckline a v neckline is a u-shaped neckline whatever neckline you decide is okay excuse me so before this tutorial i'll be using a u-shaped neckline so you can look at the pattern again to be sure that you don't have any issues before you start cutting so you go through the half length to the seam allowance the armhole <coughs> then to the top of the blouse so you just cut that off so that we have our working pattern you want to do this before cutting out the darts because you're working with bridal satin and this is mirror face so it's always all over the place all right so i'll cut out my darts now gently and in a curving manner because that's the region around the bust so you don't want to have any pointy edges okay so you cut out the side piece then want to cut the center piece so gently make sure you curve your hand while cutting okay so when you get to that point you now take it up to the upper bust line before you now cut out your neckline okay so depending on your choice you can decide to cut out your neckline after joining or you can still cut it out while drafting or while cutting whichever one you prefer i've done a video on <coughs> making a bustier and i cut the neckline after joining so feel free to play around it get creative that's the rudiment of fashion design and so these are my front pieces the two side pieces and the center piece <coughs> right now so i cut two of the lining then also place it on my lace fabric and cut exactly the same thing but the lining i'll be needing i'll be needing two pieces each okay so it means on the whole i'll have four side pieces and two center piece then i also cut for my fabric okay <coughs> that way i'll be using the uh, the lining to turn the neckline okay because i'll be attaching the lace fabric to one of the lining pieces then use the underlining piece to turn the neckline i hope that makes sense so <coughs> sorry guys right now we want to draft the back pattern okay so you just make a mark from there from the hemline or wherever you want to start your measurements from okay so remember our half length is 20 so i'm marking 20 inches there then i'll connect that point into a straight line okay so i'll also impute my measurements the bust point the under bust chest line and the upper bust measurement now i don't need all of those measurements for the back <coughs> sorry guys but just so that i have my markings accurately and that's where they are supposed to be so that's the chest line the bust point then the under bust okay so you rule them out in a horizontal line okay right <coughs> so you also measure your bust radius and mark that up from the chest line and that is the upper bust line so in case you didn't get that when you measure from the shoulder you see that you have the adequate amount you need for the off shoulder it's easier that way in other words you can decide to come down low from your off shoulder and try to make it as low as you want okay so having marked all those points then i'll start marking my zip allowance and i'm working with one and a half inches you can choose to use two inches one inch whatever you prefer to work with i'm working with <coughs> one and a half inches zip allowance so from the upper bust line down to the half length i'll mark my one and a half and connect that in a straight line <coughs> so this is my zip allowance take note so 
from the shoulder to the upper bust line it's off we don't need that part okay so we start drafting now remember the neck width we used for the front is six inches remember i told us to take out two inches from your shoulder measurement from half of your shoulder measurement okay <coughs> So that's the bust point, the under bust, the upper bust, okay, the chest line and the upper bust. Okay, so I'm marking them just so the multiple lines do not confuse us. Alright, so from the chest line, I mark half of my bust per measurement plus half inch seam allowance. I mark that on the bust point, the under bust, and the half length. <coughs> Then I connect that into a straight line from the upper bust line. Okay, from the upper bust line. So remember, we took a dot of one inch on both sides of the upper bust. Okay, then, <coughs> excuse me, on the half length, I want to take a dot of one inch, okay? You can work with half inch, but I'm working with a plus size client, okay? So I want to use a dot of one inch on both sides of the waistline. Just make sure I eliminate back puff, okay? So that the back is not puffy. <coughs> now, for the back pattern, you don't need to connect to one inch of both. You don't need to take a dot of the shoulder point, okay? So I'm just doing that in case you want to, but to give your back pattern a puff, okay, please do not do that. I'm just drafting it. You can see it to have a curve, and by the time you sew, your back pattern will have a puff, and we don't have to have a puff at the back. All right, so on the chest line, I'm making one quarter of my bust measurement plus three inches. <coughs> on the waistline, I'll mark quarter of my waist measurement plus three inches seam allowance plus two inches that replacement so i'll connect that all right so to the upper bust measurement please i beg you do not take a dot of one inch on both sides you don't need that that okay <coughs> so what i have there is six and a half inches Okay, six inches as my neck width, then half inch for joining to the sleeve. Okay, now when I place the front pattern on it, you see that I have an excess on the back pattern. I have an excess on the back pattern. <coughs> okay, so if you go ahead and cut it out like this, you will notice that your back pattern will be bigger. Than your front pattern a lot of us have issues with this when cutting our off shoulder and this is because we did not add the seam allowance to join the darts okay so by the time you cut out that that you need half inch on both sides to sew it and that is one inch so i'll mark that one inch then reconnect to the chest line okay so we'll be using half inch to join the dart so when i place back the front on it Okay, that's not the armhole okay so when i place back the front on it you see that it's matched up so that is why you have your excess when you cut your shoulder you see that the back pattern is bigger than the front it is because you did not add your seam allowance for joining the dart <coughs> because even at the upper part of the front part you join with less than half inch allowance so there is no there's no really much allowance needed for the front and the across back measurement is always bigger than the across front measurement you can take that measurement on your body and confirm all right so i'll cut through the sides okay just so we have our working piece remember so cut your armhole so be left with the pattern or the fabric we are working with all right so the next thing to do is to <coughs> come up from the zipper line by one inch now remember 
the front half length and the back half length is never the same okay so my client is busty so i can go up by two inches or even two and a half just to eliminate back off but just to be cautious i'm using one inch also because i took a dart intake of one inch so that would also help me eliminate the back off okay so that's the method to remove back off then i'll then cut through my darts okay so you see i did not cut out the one inch on both sides of the upper bust <coughs> okay so the dart is out you can decide to just sew your dart without cutting it out it's, it's your preference but cutting your dart gives you a cleaner and a neater finishing okay so you know your zip allowance on the both edges the top and bottom okay so you can decide to use your truck to make a mark to identify the upper part and, and the lower part because they look alike okay so if you're a beginner or you still get confused by which part is the upper part or the lower part of your back piece because after cutting your dart, the upper part and the lower part would look almost exactly the same. <coughs> so you need to distinguish that. Now you need to cut another piece the same way you cut the lining piece. Cut the same piece again just for turning. They also place on your fabric or your lace fabric and cut. Alright, so if you're working with Ankara, you just need the main fabric and the lining. But because you're working on a lace fabric, we would be cutting out, we'll be having three pieces in all the lace fabric, the interlining, and the lining. Alright. <coughs> so we fold over and cut the skirt pattern. Okay, that should be easy for us to cut. It's a basic skirt. I don't want this video to get too long, so I've done that off camera okay so here i have attached my breast pad i've joined <coughs> i've joined my pieces together okay so you can see the back part i've sewn the that turned the neckline okay sewn my skirt part to so the lining okay and then join the skirt part to the upper bodies so you go ahead and overlock the edges you can see i've overlocked all the edges of my fabric all right so that's it on that so this is the other back piece you can see that i've turned the neckline i've overlocked the edges they have the joining on the half plant okay and i've overlocked all the edges you can see that all the points are matching okay so i don't want the video to be too long so i also have a video on my channel on how to cut a straight skirt so you can look at that video to give you a clue on how to cut the skirt part and i'm sure most of us already know that okay so let's not get into too much protocol <coughs> okay guys so this is the back pattern so all you just have to do is to measure your zip allowance then join the sides okay attach your zip then close up the side know that this that this back pattern is going to have a slit to have a high slit because it's the skirt is shaped now this is the front piece you can see the bustier area you can see the bust area so nice okay you can see the curve is super nice like i'm tripping okay so i've also you know turned the neckline you can see the inside very neatly finished so you turn the neckline with the lining then i've joined the skirt piece to it then another vital part is to iron make sure you iron and for your lace fabric you want to start ironing from the inside okay the net fabric the lace fabric is net like mesh so it's it's really very light and when you use your hot iron to press on it it burns so you want to press on the inside first then reduce the heat on your iron then before you iron the lace part and make sure your iron doesn't stay on your fabric for too long you can see i just apply on it and take out my iron immediately okay so that it doesn't burn all right so you want to have all your edges neat and clean 
so that is the essence of pioneering so i also go ahead and you know i joined the back parts first i also want it to be as neat as the front parts now sewing tip when ironing make sure that you seem you're ironing the seam allowance towards the skirt part okay remember you join the upper bodies and the skirt bodies together then overlock the edges so but when you iron it make sure you iron the allowance towards the skirt part <coughs> excuse me guys so you also iron on the lace part but please be cautious repeat the same thing now another tip is that the lining the interlining is only shorter than the lace fabric so when you cut your skirt pattern as long as you want drape it on your lace and cut the same thing so after cutting your lace fabric you can now reduce your lining piece your interlining by three inches because you want the scallop of the lace to show except the lace doesn't have scallop okay so the lining is always shorter check all your lace fabrics you can see that incoming call from sweetest mom you can see that the lace is always longer than the satin piece okay so i've attached my zipper i've joined the sides you can see so everywhere is clean so the zipper is attached <coughs> then to the lower part i have my slits can see my heart my high slit stops at the knee or two inches above the knee line so that you'll be able to walk freely okay so you can use your use your measurements to to shape the dress taking the sides <coughs> sorry guys so the next measurement is the next thing to do is to draft your sleeve now for your sleeve you need to measure your upper bust measurement you need to measure the front part and the back so for the back i have 15 inches neck width for the front i also have 15 inches neck width neck width and that gives me 30. now remember i told us to measure your round shoulder measurement okay so the round shoulder measurement <clears throat> for my client is 47 then i have 30 as upper bust measurement so whatever minus 30 gives me 17 so 17 divided by 4 would give me 4.25 then i'll approximate that to four and a half okay because i wouldn't want the sleeve to be too tight i also wouldn't want it to be too loose that it falls off my client's shoulder okay so for your sleeve i'm also marking on my interlining but your sleeve will just be on your lace fabric you don't need to line your your lace for the sleeve okay so because the lace won't permit me to draft on it i am drafting on the interlining just for us to see okay so i fold my fabric in half just fold it into two you can the measurement you'd use to fold is your round armhole measurement divided by two plus seam allowance okay <coughs> that should take care of all the allowance you would need all right so i make a mark then from that mark you measure your sleeve length so i'm working with six inches as a sleeve length I want a short sleeve and I add two inches seam allowance for hemming my sleeve. Right. So I connect all of those points, <coughs> excuse me, in a horizontal line. Okay. So you can make your sleeve as long as you want. Right. <coughs> Remember, I said. To fold your fabric, you need your round armhole, half of your, your round armhole, plus two inches. Okay? So, I would start drafting. Now, remember from the little calculation we did, we got four and a half. So, I will add half inch for attaching the sleeve to the dress. So, that will give me five inches. Okay? So, on the upper part... I marked five inches then just so that you would get 
your armhole exactly okay i place my dress my already sewn dress okay i'll match the armhole on that five inch mark i'll match the tip of the armhole then trace it to the depth of the armhole okay so that would be where i would mark okay so when I measure that, I have around three inches. But if you decide to now start making your bust pan by your cap height, you will see that for this measurement, the cap height might be four or four and a half inches, and then you have an excess. Your sleeve will not be bigger than your dress. So using this method is easier. So I added two inches seam allowance to that. So using your fabric to drape for the armhole, it's easier. Okay, so. <coughs> I want to do that again just so that we would see it clearly after marking your five inches or whatever you got from dividing your measurements place the armhole from that five inch mark then trace it okay so that would give you the armhole measurements okay then to the upper part i want to add half inch seam allowance just to hem to hem the top of the arm um, the sleeve okay <coughs> sorry guys so that half inch seam allowance will serve as my allowance to hem the sleeve then on the lower part i'll mark my round sleeve measurement plus two inches seam allowance then i'll connect that in a straight line okay so it's easy as that then you cut out your sleeve and attach your fabric so if you found this video helpful like share subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell so if you're you'll be notified whenever i upload new videos so thank you guys bye